The Colt Mustang Pocket Light is one of the smallest and most consistently reliable concealed firearms on the U.S. market today. A scaled-down version of the original Colt M1911, a recoil-operated semi-automatic single-action pistol popular among the U.S. Armed Forces and law enforcement agencies alike. The Pocket Light is 5.5 inches long, weighs just under 13 ounces, and has a 6 plus 1 round capacity. These facts ran through Reed Hazley's mind as he stared into the stainless steel barrel of one such gun, particularly the part about the round capacity. How the hell did we end up in this situation? You don't want to do this, Dennis, he said in a steady voice. Detective Chris Lockett, his partner in the Boston PD homicide unit, shifted slightly a couple of feet to his right. Reed kept his gaze focused on the pale, sweaty young man who stood on the other side of the front room of the shabby second-floor apartment in South Boston. Dennis Whitman was a key witness to a violent armed robbery, assault, and attempted homicide perpetrated by two masked men the previous night at a 7-Eleven franchise on Broadway. It had taken Reed and Lockett three hours of going through CCTV recordings to finally identify him as the skinny male who had been standing on the corner of the road when the suspects ran out of the store. One of the men stumbled into Whitman and pushed him to the ground before fleeing into the night. As such, Whitman was one of two people who had gotten close enough to the suspects to be able to help with their identification. The other was Fernando Lopez, the 7-Eleven night store manager currently fighting for his life in the intensive care unit at the Massachusetts General Hospital. Whitman was known to the police for a previous DUI and two counts of possession of a Class D substance. According to his probation officer, he was now clean and ready to embrace a life free of crime, which didn't quite explain the presence of the gun currently clasped in his damp, shaking hand. They hadn't seen a license for a firearm in his records, and they certainly hadn't expected to be faced with one when they came upon the open door of his rental apartment 60 seconds ago and entered the place to clear it. Look, we just want to talk to you about what happened last night, said Lockett. Reed avoided looking at his partner. A seasoned patrol officer and a sergeant, Lockett only made detective eight months ago. Though the man was an experienced cop, Reed knew this was Lockett's first time looking at the wrong end of a gun. As a Marine-turned-homicide detective, Reed was a seasoned veteran who had seen plenty of firefights and knew how to handle them. Right now, Lockett's body language reminded him of some of the young soldiers who saw action for the first time on the battlefield. The jumpy ones who got themselves and their friends killed. He consciously dropped his shoulders and adopted a relaxed posture. You were outside the 7-Eleven on Broadway last night when those robbers ran in. We saw you on a CCTV recording. Whitman twitched. Reed's gaze flicked to the wavering gun in his hand before returning to the man's ashen face and dilated pupils. He could read more than fear in Whitman's eyes. The guy was high on something. The man those robbers shot is in critical condition in the hospital. We just want to talk to you about what you saw. Reed paused. You'll be helping us out, Dennis. Just put the gun down and we can... Nah! Whitman's voice quavered almost as badly as his hand. I had nothing to do with that shit. You guys, you guys are trying to con me. I'm not going back to jail, you hear? He jutted out his chin and tightened his grip on the gun. Reed bit back a sigh. Great. Drug-induced paranoia. That's all we need right now. A balmy breeze blew through the open window to the left and rattled the metal blinds. Sweat prickled Reed's scalp. It was the height of summer, and Boston was in the grip of one of the worst heat waves the city had seen in over a decade. The crime rate had risen proportionately, with assaults and homicides skyrocketing to levels seldom seen before. Reed allowed a small smile to cross his lips. No one is going to take you to jail, Dennis. Well, not straight away, anyway. I'm sure we can persuade the prosecutor's office to look leniently on your case. Lockett added stiffly. Whitman's eyes widened, panic radiating off him almost as badly as the stench of sweat. Reed masked a wince. Bad choice of words. At this rate, the breeze was going to be blowing through a hole in his or Lockett's stomach in the next minute or so. It was time for action. He took two steps forward. Whitman startled. Well, what, are you, what are you doing? Reed shrugged. I'm going to take that gun off you. Lockett drew a breath in sharply behind him. Whitman gaped. Oh, are you crazy? Well... No, Reed drawled. You see, I can tell you haven't had that gun for long. Huh? Whitman blinked owlishly. H how can you? The safety's still on. By the time Whitman looked down and realized he had just been told a lie, Reed was already moving. He leapt onto the coffee table, 
jumped just as Whitman's arm rose.